So we got invited in to a house here. Hello. <laughs> so what is your name? <laughs> and what is your name? Thank you for inviting us to come in. <laughs> you have a very beautiful home. <laughs> it is exquisite. <laughs> this place is so huge. Wow, look at this. Incredible! So I know! <laughs> like an oasis. Yeah! And what is your name? Abdullah. Abdullah? I'm Logan. <laughs> Actually, just saw this beautiful place outside and I thought it was a palace, so I was wandering in and then it turned out to be a private home and they invited us in to check it out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is incredible Saudi Arabian hospitality. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Who is this? Oh, <laughs> Everything for you. Oh, wow. yeah. okay. Then you need to need, need the big space. You need to, lots of room. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does everybody live here? Yes. Wow. That's why there's so much space. Uh, tourism and marketing. They want now one name uh, for Netherlands. Netherlands. The, yeah, the Netherlands. Netherlands. Yes, Holland is a more like older name. Like uh, uh, normal people always used to say Holland, um, and the provinces are Holland. The most important provinces are Holland, but the whole country is the Netherlands. So we have new name. And now snacking on this platter of abundance. Thank you again. I should come. Ah, it's so pretty. Ah, wow. That was incredible. So, that was just incredible. That whole building right there. I thought that was a palace, so I just wanted to peek inside. And lo and behold, it is basically a palace. A sheik lives there with his family. Actually, the sheik, the prince, is uh, who we were talking to that was the prince is his father and his whole family of 30 people lived in that building so for them to invite us in have Arabic coffee dates oh my gosh that's fruit got some water with us yeah and just kept on offering offering it was just so generous and just what a experience I think that was one of my top favorite experience of traveling with you, Hussey? Yeah, definitely. Wow. And we got to talk about the Netherlands. Yeah, you knew about the name change. Yeah, from Holland to the Netherlands. And it just, it's just such a great cultural exchange. We've now arrived to this province, which is Saudi Arabia's most conservative region. Boreada has the uninevitable reputation of being the most conservative town in all of Saudi Arabia. So, uh, yes, you heard me correctly. It's in the heart of the Naj region, since this is the strictest, strictest city in Saudi Arabia, and any offense against Sharia law will lead straight to execution, not even jail time. I don't even know if I should be waving my camera around in public right now. Even just walking around makes me a little squeamish and queasy. But I want to explore the place and I want to show you around. So 
conservatism aside, Boreada is known for its dates. Yes, the fruits, dates. And it holds a giant dates festival every single year here. The health benefits of dates are even mentioned in the Quran, which is Islam's holy text. And by eating them, it prevents many diseases such as heart disease and diabetes. There are dates which are used for pure delicacy purposes, such are used to make juices and paste, flour, or syrup as well. Okay, so after all that date talk, since we're here in the date city, let's buy some. But I only want to buy a few samples. Usually they go for kilos. So I'm gonna ask. Oh wait, we can try them? I think you can try it. Yep. Uh, oh! And, okay, one for Should you. Should ask what is the sweetest one, the name? Oh yeah, okay, let me... Hold on, I'm gonna ask for the sweetest one. Mmm. Sucre? So I think this is sweet. Mmm. Mm. Got a little nut inside. It's very fibery. It's almost like eating caramelized syrup itself, which is makes sense because you can melt this and it becomes syrup. Mm. I like this one. What do you think? Very nice, very yeah. sweet. But got some of these. These are Tamir and Rutab, which is the in-between stage dates. Dates has four different stages. And so these are a little bit dark, a little bit whitened, golden. That's you to know. Ooh, I need to go use the washroom so bad now. Okay, okay, I'm gonna take you with me. So I'm using a public toilet. The public toilets here are just squatting toilets, so you squat over. Like so. But the funny part is there's this that you can put on top. But of course, there's no toilet paper, just a hose to wash yourself. Dates were a good appetizer, but now let's get some real bites. All right, so <laughs> we're excited for our shawarmas. Yes. <laughs> Is this chicken? Chicken. Okay. <laughs> Looks so good. So big. Yeah, so big. Look at that. Scraping it off. Woo! It's a good job. Oh, Arabian tea? I want to get safely on this roundabout. <laughs> <laughs> With the drivers here, I'm just gonna let him drive and concentrate. <laughs> Even though that centerpiece is really cute in the roundabout. <laughs> yeah, but I'm glad that there's police everywhere because they, just in case when you get into a car crash or an accident, they're right there to help you. Because <laughs> that's what you have to do, you have to follow my like, report. 
I think I think no other country in the world is as misunderstood as where we are traveling right now in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Tales of 1001 Arabian Nights to magic carpet rides to the desert moon. I think Saudi Arabia's elusiveness and mysteriousness is what compelled me to travel here to find out the truth between myths and the legends for myself. Assalamu alaikum from the city of Hail. Hail, where we are, lays on the eastern side of the massive Jaba Aga and is mainly populated by the Al Shamari tribe. Now, this tribe originated from this region of the Arabian Peninsula and that can be found today all the way to Syria. Also where we are right now is the Brazen Castle, an archaeological site in Haiti. This is the Grand Al Rashid Mosque. It is absolutely decadent and, of course, humongous. Look at these domes. Like most mosque designs, there's two floors. Down here for the men to pray, and then upstairs for the women to pray as well. And this is how you know where to face when you're praying, because this shows you where Mecca is. And so everybody when they're praying faces towards Mecca. I think growing up in the West, especially in North America, uh, you just get all these misconceptions about the Middle East and about this region. You know, it's a huge region and Saudi Arabia is a huge country. And so going from one city to the next can be completely different sets of cultures. And the Arabian Peninsula is made of so many different tribes as well, even though it's united under several different kingdoms. But this is also why it's so important to us that we are here and discovering these places for ourselves so we can make up these perceptions and our own critical thoughts about these places and also enjoy these architecture, get to meet different locals and really soak into the different customs and cultures. Being one of the first travelers in Saudi Arabia with the newly open and accessible the visa, the tourist visa that we have, pros, you get to explore these places when there's no other tourists around. Whew. Yeah, I just have to watch my staff going up this. Oh. But the con is, is that a lot of these sites are closed for redevelopment or restoration still even though the country is gearing up to be fully a big become a big tourist destination but that isn't even until 2030 the plan currently stands but until then we can explore such as this place the Arif Fort in Ha'il even while it's closed so this is Kind of, we had to climb all the way up to a little bit of a mountain top, and it awarded us with pretty spectacular view. So I completely understand why this spot has been so coveted because of its strategic location, and this, this city actually has a few fortified buildings protecting the rulers. But this is probably the oldest 
and famous one having been built over 200 years ago and did you know that it was it's made up of wood? I see it right? Put a wall around it. Yeah. <laughs> We just went from the most conservative, strictest city in all of Saudi Arabia, of Buryada, where the answer for punishment is execution, to now a city of Hayel that has a much better reputation. Hayel is well known by the generosity of its people in Saudi Arabia and the Arab world in general, as this is the place where lived Hatim al Tai, who was a famous Arab poet and one of the characters in A Thousand and One Nights. Stories about his extreme generosity have made him an icon to Arabs up to the present day, as in the peripheral phase, more generous than Hatim. Originated from him. It's huge inside the palace. Look, this is the palace grounds and it's a huge open courtyard and such beautiful columns too. <sighs> Speaking of hospitality, so I asked the guard if we could be let in because there's actually an event being held inside the courtyard during the time that we're here. As you can see, there's different artworks being set up different photography exhibitions and then the guard was so nice he was like okay and then he took us he's right there on a personal tour right now wow so this also explains the construction noise in the background but also why we're the only ones here look at this beautiful bed with style tent A lot of our adventures in Saudi Arabia is unplanned because we simply just don't have the information or don't know where to go. But when we do find something out of that unplanned spontaneity, it just has this surreal, phenomenal feeling. Like this beautiful courtyard of a mosque that was just right across from the palace grounds. Wow. I know this whole Lulu spree, food spree, is supposed to be for our road trip snacks, but so hungry. It's so, so, so good. It's already still fresh and hot. Oh, so we're gonna dig in. Right, look at this. Oh, wow. Ooh. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, you know what? So crunchy and nice spiciness kick to it and the chicken is so succulent still. Wow, this is this is how you make fried chicken. Oh everything is dropped. Oh oh no, wow. my sweater is ruined. There's like oil patches now. But I'm so happy. Desert, people wait in the sand to 
one side and the other and then just pour pavement right through. inspection BAM Wow Yeah Inscription Wow The last place we are exploring today in Saudi Arabia during our road trip is also I think one of the most impressive places in the country So this is Juba Juba is our next UNESCO World Heritage Site, famous for its well-preserved rock art and some of the best examples in the world. Such as this right here. So cleared and detailed. This is arguably the kingdom's premier pre-Islamic site and an open-air art gallery. It covers an area measuring about 39 square kilometers and some of the most impressive petrographs aka rock carvings you are likely to ever see here. You can see how deep it cuts too and the depth of the incision probably allows that's why it allows the image to show so distinctively as since the sun is like hitting across these rocks. These are definitely extremely well executed. Imagine the time it took to complete them. Yeah. Woo. Get out of the rock. Yeah. In the sun? That was a fantastic thing. Yeah. Dedicated. Some of the finest carvings here date from around 5500 BC when much of this area was an inland lake and inhabitants carved game animals that came to its waters. So just looking out, this was just all water? Kind of unbelievable. Yeah? Look, you can see a hunter with his spear chasing after animals like this goat with the gigantic horns. Ooh, and another hunter fighting them back. When I was younger, when I was a little kid, I always, one of the jobs that I always wanted to become was an archaeologist. And Yurun has heard this story so many times. But I think my idea of an archaeologist was kind of like warped because of all the Indiana Jones, Tomb Raider movies and the different Lego piece sets. But being here and having this whole entire place to ourselves is just, this is like a little piece of, a little, little, little piece of what an archaeologist, in my warp head, of what it could be. Because to see these caves like rock drawings just in real life and being so close to them out in the open unrestricted is ah that that little archaeologist kid in me is like yeah even though that's really <laughs> like a little slice of archaeology compared to what an actual archaeologist is what I later found out that is tons of research which is why I chose to not go and major in it in university but here we are You see the creepy one that looks like Slenderman? Yeah. I'll follow you. Ugh. Everywhere. The children stories. The nightmare stories. The little kids. Like yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, empty must have been uh, like similar at like Akwai or Bagan and just opened up. Yeah, before tourists even arrived and when the government and the whole country just became accessible. Yeah. Just so quiet <laughs> and peaceful. There's no huge tour groups, no backpackers, nobody. <laughs> yes. 
yet. <laughs> but, you know, the, another thing about this is that this whole site, and actually, now that I'm thinking about it, every place that we've been to has been free. Yeah. Like, there's no entry charges at all, and you no know, parking charges, just every single place has been free, and gas to drive here. What, what, how much was the full tank? Uh, the last one was like 15 euros. It's about 35 cents uh, per liter. It's crazy. All you need is a car to drive and you're good to go, really. And these places are here for everyone to explore and discover and just, you know, expand your mind with. So I think that's the thing that's when people write out, write off a whole region, a whole country. It just, you write off a whole civilization that came before it, right? You write off the locals in the country. You write off um, the culture, the food, the architecture, the landscape that's in the country. So I hope that you've been enjoying following our adventures in Saudi Arabia. There'll be more to come because this is just part of our road trip. We're still continuing on. And I hope this dispatch vlog makes Saudi Arabia and the whole kingdom a little bit less mysterious for you. And with still keeping some of that, you know, sense of wonderment. But if you haven't already, click subscribe for more Saudi Arabia videos coming your way. As well as give this video a like, a thumbs up, and leave us in the comments below. What do you think of our travels so far? See you in the next adventure.